Welcome back. Now we're gonna go over some prototype actions next. So what we've been basically doing is some basic stuff like if we click on something like this, it goes to the next page and this is essentially the prototype action. Do you want it to navigate to? Do you want it to open an overlay? Do you wanna swap with? Do you wanna go back, close overlay, open a link? I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can do. So. I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of them. So navigate to we've been doing, and that essentially just goes from one page to the next, very simple. And then, you know, at this stage, like when you're early on prototyping, that's all you really need. But if you wanna do something a little bit more complex, let's just drag this all the way down to our search. And what we can do is, I'm just trying to think, let's create a new search and we're not gonna have anything in here. We're not gonna have a background. And we're just gonna call this keyboard overlay. So what we can do is, let's just delete that. Let's put something together. So if I click my prototype and I click the trigger just to go over to that page. Once I tap the search, what will happen is it will come to this search page. And what we can do is let's take a look. Okay. So we've gone to this page and like on this, what we can do is after delay, we can open an overlay and that overlay can be this and we can have it like uh, move in from the bottom. We'll get into this a little bit more, uh, but this can happen like 200 milliseconds after the initial click, and I'll show you what, the, what it looks like. So I'm over here, I wanna search, I click search, and the overlay comes up. So that's a little weird how it happened, and we can actually customize that behavior. So this will come up, no, um, hmm. This will open an overlay. There we go. That's why. And this overlay will be sticky to the bottom and the center. You can like specify where that happens. So this essentially will be really uh, fixed to the bottom. And when you click outside, you can remove it. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's press R to restart. Boom, there it is. If I click outside of the overlay, it should have closed it. <laughs> Let's take a look here. So let's see, close when clicking outside. Oh, it's probably because it's the whole frame. So if I do something like this, there we go. Now it closes. So let's go back and restart that. So we search on overlay, click it. Perfect. And we can even like link this together again. If I click that again, I want it to open and it's going to automatically select like open overlay over again. So we can kind of create like a little bit of a loop here. Boom, 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 boom. So let's, let's actually keep on going with this. The next is to swap. Now swap allows you to replace one frame with another. This will kind of behave similarly to the navigate option when triggered from a hotspot, like in a regular frame. If you apply a swap to hotspot in an overlay, it will replace or swap that current overlay with a new destination frame. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if I create another one over here and like I change the background color to black. I mean, don't do this. Okay, let's see what this prototype looks like. So if I click prototype and I click on this, I can swap it. So on tap, swap with the new keyboard overlay. And let's see what that looks like. Do you see how it just swaps the overlay? So that's very useful if you need it.
that was kind of like a terrible color choice for that keyboard, but it gets the point across. Now, another thing we can add to this is like back. So I have the, the icon selected here, that tappable area, and on tap, I wanna just go back. That's essentially is going to navigate back to the previous scheme. This is perfect for like simulating the back button in your prototypes, which we're doing right now. So this will go back there. Let's go search, overlay, click outside the overlay, go back. And you'll notice that even though we brought in the new frame as an overlay, it doesn't like affect that when we're actually going back and forth. What you can also do to simulate the back button is to actually link it if you want to that previous screen. I mean, it, you're really only coming in from search in this prototype from this screen. So you can easily just link that back to like that. So let's see. There we go. Perfect. Now, another action is like close overlay, and we've kind of done that already. Like if we want to click on this, we can actually do like on tap, close overlay, and essentially that will remove the overlay. So let's go back, let's search what that looks like. Boom, and there you go, removing the overlay. So this actually allows you to close or dismiss any overlays that have appeared over that original frame. And essentially those are all the different types of prototype actions that I use. Overlay's really nice for simulating stuff like keyboards or like modals and stuff like that. Like you can add stuff to that overlay. So an example is, let's see, I haven't used overlay in a long time. So what we're gonna do is, so this trigger is gonna open up overlay and you can add like a background behind it. And I think you need the whole frame to do that. So let's take a look. Yeah, so no, actually, no, it's fine. So you can add the background around the overlay, which is really nice. I mean, in this case, when you're using a keyboard, you probably may not want to, because if we're doing like predicting the type of head in terms of what the user's typing here, we probably want to see what's showing up over here. But like if you're using a modal, you'll definitely want to add an overlay just to kind of hide that background information and create more contrast for that modal to kind of pop on the screen. So yeah, that's definitely an easy way to use prototype actions within Figma.